Okay, so I'm gonna have a extremely simple app here, which is just gonna be a, uh, an app. So we'll, I'll do it in class and then functional. Um, so I have a, I'll start off with classes. So I have this app and then this app is rendering this child's component. There's really nothing going on here. And so the way this works is it's not really going to be visible, but when I, if I refresh this, the render methods are going to get called and a whole bunch of other methods are available in the, in React class based uh, components called lifecycle methods. And they're basically points in the, you know, as React does its thing, there's a whole, uh, a whole series of events that occur and you can tap into those events or override functions that get called at certain points and uh, you know, modify things or, or, or do things. <clears throat> so we, we've obviously seen a lot of this before. We'll just look at, look at some of this again. So the, the first thing we can see is the component did mount. So when, when I hit refresh, render, render gets called, and the, the DOM gets updated and the DOM gets painted. Um, if I call component did mount, after the DOM is, is updated, uh, this method will get called. And it's, it's basically getting called anyway, but if we override it, we can see that happening. Um, so it, my, if you look here, there's actually a whole bunch of these lifecycle methods, and a lot of them have been deprecated. So class-based components are still perfectly valid in React, and they're not, um, you know, officially they're not, they're not going away, but a lot of the original lifecycle methods have been officially deprecated. And you can see they've actually renamed them, like I think in React 17, um, the most recent major version, they actually append unsafe underscore to them just to make sure that you don't use them. So uh, first one would be component did mount, which we've seen before. So this would, you'll, you want to call this if you want to, to do things that are going to affect, um, affect what's on the DOM, but you need, you need the DOM to be there first. So I'm just going to use console, uh, console logs. And so we'll go here, I'll refresh this, and I can see in the console log, app mounted so not a not a huge surprise there so let me do the same thing i'm going to add the same method to the child and you know is anything strange Um, the child's mounting first, which is a little surprising. Yeah. So that I was was someone going to say something? I was going to say I don't think it's that strange because we want everything in the app to do it first, and then finish loading the main app. Right. It, exactly. So so component did mount. It expects everything to be there, ready to go. So the, the child component, since app is rendering a child component, this child component is going to be, have to be ready first, and then the app. It's kind of like recursion, right? Like it has to get all the way and start coming back. Yeah, the, uh, all the leaf nodes have to be there before the, the root is there. Okay, so that's uh, component did mount. I mean, this is, this is going to be the main lifecycle method that you uh, that you'll use. This is like making API calls to get some you know in, initial data. So component did mount. Um, there's a whole bunch of. I'm not going to show you all of them because there's just. I mean, there's a ton of them, and most of them are very they have very specific use cases. There's a small number that are actually really uh, useful or commonly used. So another one would be. Um, should component update. So should component update. 
very verbose names. You can probably guess uh, what, what it does. So should component update is it takes in, let me see. Uh, it takes in what the what the most recent um, props and state will be. So and I'll, I'll, I'll just console log first. And so I'll just do this and I'll refresh this. You might have to uh, set, sorry, I'm gonna have to set state. So one, one thing we'll have to return uh, either true or false here. So so what, what this will be used for is to reduce unnecessary rendering. So if you have a whole bunch of components and you're always, you know, re-rendering everything all the time, even if it's, even if the component hasn't really changed, uh, you know, that can lead to uh, efficiency issues. So there are times when you want to test some condition and then only update it if, if it meets that condition. So I'm going to add some state here. And then um, we'll do All right, so um, yeah, so I'm going to add an event listener here. This will be on click. All right, now if I click here, oops, sorry, I was treating that like the functional. Shoot. So I'm going to load this app. I get child mounted, then the app mounted. So this is coming from the component did mount lifecycle methods. And if I clicks on something, I'm changing the state in app. So then this lifecycle method gets called. So I change the state and then that method gets called. I also get a warning because should a component update needs to return either true or false, meaning should it update or not. So I can return true I'll refresh. Child mounted, app mounted, and this gets called. And this actually re-renders. So you can see that from the, the lines here, if you have that in, in your dev tools, it's like it flashes on around the components that are changing. You can also, if you go into your profiler, go to the profiler, you can click record, start profiling, and then do whatever you're gonna do in your app and then stop. And then you can take a look at, so this is like the first event. This is the second event, but it, so this is, if you're looking, uh, if you're looking to see like what your app is doing, are you doing any unnecessary re-renders and stuff like that? Uh, you can take a look. So when I first clicked there, the app uh, re-rendered because the, the state changed. So I, I clicked it, it ran the, the handler, it set the state, which changed the state, which triggered a re-render. The child component re-rendered just because the parent component re-rendered. So you can see that the child component hasn't changed at all, but it's still got uh, it's still got 
be rendered. So that might be something that we want to avoid. Okay. How do you access should component update in functional? Um, yeah, we'll do component. we'll do uh, we'll we'll do this in class based components, and then I'll switch to the functional components. Not not everything is going to have a one to one correspondence, um, but but basically it will. So here's component to mount should component update. Um, there's also let me say there's like component will receive props if you want to check uh if, if you want to check the props um let's see come on to mount should want to update how about a uh, component will unmount so we saw this one before we had the uh, uh set interval going and in order to clean up and stop the set interval we had to clear it when the component unmounted. So basically, uh, oftentimes component did mount and component will unmount, will we'll go hand in hand, depending on what you're doing and component did mount. If you're setting up, if you're setting up something, um, then you'll wanna clear it out when the component goes away. So this actually, uh, we're not gonna get rid of the app, to, but let's go to the child component and let's do component will unmount. Okay, so now I have this component will unmount and it's not gonna run because it's not going to unmount. So we need to make sure that it unmounts so we can conditionally render that. We'll do something like uh, this that state. All right, so now we're conditionally going to render that child component. So the app mounts, the child is not being rendered. So we don't see that it's not mounted. I click this and then I've updated the, uh, the app state, right? I've changed the state of app by clicking on that. So trigger is now true. That triggers, uh, so that, you know, this is one of several um, lifecycle methods that get called and then the child gets mounted. Now, if I unmount, if I click this again, Again, I change the state of app, and then I have an opportunity to do any cleanup in, in child, in the child's component. So there are, so, so these are like, I, I would say these are the basic, um, the basic life cycle methods you'll use 90, maybe 98 or 99% of the time. And there's a whole bunch of other ones that have very specific uh, use cases. Okay, so now let's switch to functional components. Are they still referred to as lifecycle methods with functional or do, do people use hooks and lifecycle like interchangeably now? Yeah, they don't really call the, they don't really call hooks lifecycle methods. Okay, that's yeah, how it they, looks like I, documentation. It just yeah, yeah. Conceptually, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure what's happening under the hood, what what the you know the the nitty gritty differences are, but hooks hooks seem to be more more general. Okay. So let's take a look at our app again. Should be. Did I me refresh this? Yeah. Okay. 
So now I have uh, app, and let's say I want to get roughly. Well, let's say I, I want to to see what's happening when when it mounts. So what what hook should I use for that? Use effect. Yeah. So I'll import that. And you use the the brackets with nothing in it to to do on mount. Okay. Use effect, we'll take a callback. And then the dependency array, we can give it an empty one to only run when it mounts. So the child component is still a class component. Um, so you can combine those and there's no problem. So um, app use effect is called. This isn't, we're not doing anything with the clicks, but, but that's basically it. So use effect gets called, child mounts, and then use effect gets called. So effectively it's, you know, it's analogous to uh, component did mount. Okay, let's add some state. And then in the H1, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add the uh, on click. So by the way, when you're uh, changing state based on previous state, you should not do it this way. You should use a, uh, a callback. So um, this will also accept a callback. Um, Is this, when you're using the deconstructed use state, like the set trigger in this example, is it preferred for the on click that you have the separate handle click function versus passing down the set trigger as the prop to the child? Uh, I believe that there's an issue with functional components directly, uh, directly calling. I, I don't think you can call hooks outside of, I don't think you can call hooks in the, in the return, basically. I think I was doing that and it wasn't working. So I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can try it real quick, but yeah. I, I think that you, you can only call hooks up here. All right, so we've got our app. Let's just check so we can handle click. All right, so I'll give it a try, refresh. Let me see. I'm changing the state, but I'm not doing anything else. So I could, in my use effect, remove that dependency array altogether. And use effect, let me refresh this. Okay. So the child mounts, and then the uh, app component mounts. I click this, the app use effect gets called. And it gets, so it's going to get called anytime there's a, a change in app. I can do it basically whenever. I can also be more specific in this case. It won't really make a difference, but we had lots of different uh, you know, items of state. We could specify which ones 
we wanted to, to run in use effect. This will end up being the same. And then uh, we can do the same thing with the component. So now we're changing. So if we look, let's look at the profiler real quick. So we'll start recording. So the app is rendering without the child, you know, even though the child's there, it's not being actually rendered. So it doesn't, it doesn't exist. So it doesn't show up. And we can see that all the, the child's lifecycle methods are being called like will unmount. So let's go change the child to a functional component. And I'm gonna add the use effect here. And we'll just console log. All right. So the child use bit gets called and then the app and so on. So every time it shows up, that's what's gonna happen. Um, so let me let me get rid of let's see. So instead of doing this where I'm actually making it um, unmount, I'm gonna pass in a prop. Uh, Okay, so use effect and uh, so both of these are getting called. And if we run the profiler, you can see that the, the child is getting called because the props changed. So app changes because it says hooks changed, but this is state, the state hook. So state changed and then the props changed. So if we wanted to, let's say we, um, instead of, let's pass in the same prop every time. Uh, So let's look at the components, the trigger. So there's the prop. So now we have a case where, you know, the app component is re-rendering and that's fine. That's what you expect because the state is changing, but the child component, it's, it hasn't changed. It's still receiving the same props. And we can see that uh, actually, let's see. Yeah, so uh, react by default, if, if it doesn't, if the props are the same, it won't re-render it. So the props are saying that the props are static. So the component 
React knows not to update the component. We can also use, um, there's a, a higher order. So we can't, uh, there isn't anything directly like um, should component update to check if the, uh, if the component should actually update. So if you want to uh, control that at least a little bit, you can use, there's a high order component, built in high order component called memo. Um, so you can basically wrap, you, you wrap the child component in a, a memo. So I think you can do it like this as well. So the child here uh, isn't rendering, which uh, it shouldn't because it hasn't changed. But let me get rid of the props here. Uh, go to child. All right, so now I'm going to refresh this and see that now these now the child is re is re-rendering. Um, even though it hasn't changed at all. So when we passed in props and the props were the same, React knows React knows not to, to re-render the child unnecessarily because the props haven't changed. But if you don't pass in props, by default, it's just going to re-render it every time the parent, every time a parent component re-renders, it's going to re-render its children. And in this case, this is an unnecessary re-render. So if we clear this and profile again, do a few clicks, you can see that the child and the app are re-rendering. We can solve that by wrapping this child component in memo, which is a higher order component. And what that's going to do is if the, if it, if the component hasn't changed, it won't, it won't uh, re-render it. So I'm going to clear this and then profile again. And I'm going to click a couple times. And you can see that the child doesn't render. So memo prevented this child component from re-rendering. So that's, I mean, that's basically all I wanted to go over, just looking more at the dev tool. So as you start, you know, as you start making React apps that are a little bit more complicated, it's a good idea to periodically check in. Don't, I mean, I don't like, don't try to over optimize or anything, but I'm just, it's something to look out for when you're, you know, if you have 50 re-renders every time, uh, every time you do something, you might want to uh, fix that. So that's, I mean, there's a, a couple of ways of doing that with hooks and with, both with hooks and with the, the class-based lifecycle methods.